Hey everybody, it's Warren and Julie, and today we have some friends of ours that we met uh, when we were in when they were in Montenegro visiting when we were at our home in uh, Montenegro uh, that we use for the Schengen Shuffle as we do our nomad experience. But uh, this couple lives in Germany, and they are just wonderful, wonderful people. Um, Eric and Jamie are living in Stuttgart, and they are going to share with us today their expat experience and cost of living and quality of life living in Stuttgart, Germany. We had a, an opportunity to visit with them briefly on our travels last year. And so we'll show some of that footage throughout the video, but uh, let me welcome over uh, Eric and Jamie. Hello. <laughs> Hey, how's it going, Warren? How's it going, Julie? Good to see you. Good, good. Hey, Warren, Julie. Yeah. Hey. Yeah, glad to see you guys. Um, so first off, how is your son? Your son is with you too. So there's a family of three. So when we're speaking about your budget today, if it's a couple, they might be able to do things a little bit less expensively because you have a teenage boy you're feeding also. Yes. <laughs> That's correct. Yeah, so we have a 14-year-old boy who is in ninth grade and um he does wrestling. Uh, he does music lessons, so we definitely do have uh, expenses as well as the food. As he is growing, he's he's grown about six inches in the last uh, in the last year or so. So oh, he's really wow. he's yeah. now taller than Jamie. Yes. So the other day. yes, he was so proud. <laughs> wow, I, I guess I'm not going to even recognize him when we see him again. That's probably true. Yeah, <laughs> he might be my height. We'll see next <laughs> by September. We don't know. Um. So now you guys have been um, living in Stuttgart now for how long? For a year and a half, since August of 2022. Okay. And, and, you know, so what brought you and your family to Stuttgart? And uh, tell me a little bit about your your quality of life there and why you're there. Okay. Well, I'll take the work part, and then I'll let Jamie uh, talk to the quality of life. So. Um, I had the opportunity in 2022, I'm a contractor for the Department of Defense, and um, my contract had a job opening in Stuttgart, Germany, uh, supporting the Department of Defense over here. Mm -hmm. And um, we got the offer, and it was uh, the perfect timing for us. We felt like our son was not too old to uh, make the change. He wasn't in high school yet. Mm -hmm. And uh, we wanted the opportunity to be able to travel and see Europe. And um, and it was a really good offer with a lot of benefits, which uh, we'll be glad to talk about, um, you know, during our conversation uh, this evening. But um, yeah, so my my job is working uh, for the Department of Defense as a contractor, and then I also um, am, am an Army reservist. I have uh, just over twenty years in the Army, um, part of that active and part of that reserves, and so I also took an Army reserve position at the command that I work for in Stuttgart. So I'm able to work both uh, my contracting position and do my army reserve time uh, in Stuttgart here. Oh, that's awesome. I didn't know that you can do reserve time overseas like that. That's, I didn't either. That's pretty cool. <laughs> you can, I found out when I got over here. And so um, I transitioned out of the National Guard unit I was in uh, to the army reserves over here in Stuttgart and um, I've been able to support the command over here that I work for. Cool. And, and so you have a, pretty good lifestyle than living in Germany. And uh, it sounds like it's less expensive as well than what you are, would, would be similar in the United States. Yeah. Um, so when we lived in the United States, we lived in Raleigh and we were dual income. Uh, Jamie was working as a midwife at a hospital delivering babies. And I was working my job in, uh, as a contractor. And we had the normal American uh, life. We had the big home, multiple cars. Multiple cars. Uh, we had long commutes everywhere to get our son to school, to get our son to practices, mm -hmm. um, and all of the stress that is incurred with that, which generally led to a lot of eating out. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, and then all of the different things that all the little costs that add up. And one of the things that we found moving over here is that our life is a lot. Uh, more simplified. Mm -hmm. We were able to downsize from uh, from three cars down to one. We were able to downsize to a uh, an efficient uh, Volkswagen diesel uh, and just have one car because the public transportation is so good that we can take the train all over. Um, and then uh, Jamie and Benjamin are able to bike almost anywhere that they need to, whether it's for groceries, school, 
uh, wrestling practice, uh, band practice. Uh, everything is so local in our community. And so we found that um, our expenses have really come down. Part of just having the ease of public transportation or just being able to self-transport, walking, biking, um, I feel like it slows everything down a bit. So it just feels like you're not always rushing from place mm -hmm. to place. And so there's something nice about, you know, either biking or walking to go to the grocery store and then getting things and coming back. And it doesn't feel like a, a big event. And the food quality we've found is just really, really excellent mm -hmm. here in Germany. Um, and prices um, are just surprisingly less expensive, um, especially as we hear from friends and family back in the States of how the prices on produce keeps going up or other things. And then we kind of look at our grocery store and we feel like we have such great quality. And then um, even with the springtime, we've been noticing that some of the produce has been ridiculously cheap. Mm -hmm. um, it's like, oh, this was a good price before. And now all of a sudden it's in season and this is just kind of amazing. Um, yeah, so I feel like we're, we eat really well. We actually wind up eating out a lot, lot less, um, partly because... Um, I think our life has slowed down a bit, and so we have more time, and I really do enjoy cooking. Julie and Jamie in the kitchen cooking. Yay. And most importantly, <laughs> I've got beer over here with Eric. Beer. Beer time. Um, and I enjoy cooking with really good ingredients. Mm -hmm. um, and then partially because it is, um, while groceries are less expensive here in Germany, eating out is a bit more expensive because they take into account um, having to pay employees, um, not, you know, not just enough money for what they earn, but also like their, I guess their equivalent of social security, um, vacation insurance and all that, that those things. So just the price that you pay includes all of that. So it's just a little bit more. Um, you, you got a family of three. What do you think you're spending on a month between your groceries going to the fruit and vegetable market and uh, the different stores? Yeah, I think, I mean, including alcohol, coffee, um, chocolate, like all at eating out, all the things, probably about a thousand a month. That's um, cool. And that, that's what the, and we do, so, so I'm going to say each one of you have an equal share in that at his age. I, I think that's probably <laughs> fair. So, so yeah. a, a couple could probably take 33% uh, of that off, but then it's say <laughs> somewhere about 650 or Seven hundred dollars a month for. A mm -hmm. I think you could, and yeah. we and we are not. We have not been trying to keep our budget low for because the way we look at it is, is all the money that we spend at the grocery store is money that we don't spend eating out. Mm -hmm. And so, um, one of the great things is, you know, um, we saw your videos on traveling over in Sicily. We have access to amazing wine here in Germany, so we can get the French wines from just across, we're only an hour, 45 minutes from Strasbourg, France, and a lot of the, the, the you know, the wine regions, um, Italian wine, you can get great bottles of wine for, I mean, you can spend as little as two euro. And if you want to spend more, like, you know, we find that sweet spot at the six to seven euro mark, you have fantastic wine. Mm -hmm. that you'd probably spend more than double that in the States to get that same bottle. So, um, so our cost for groceries is, is looking at everything, which includes wine. I like scotch, um, you know, and really without having to hold back on anything. And the other nice thing is there's a lot more BO, uh, or organic is the, the European label, uh, is BO over here. Um, there's a lot more BO, uh, products available in the store. Uh, but one of the, one thing that we really enjoy, uh, where we're living, we overlook, um, fields is and so mm -hmm. every time they harvest they plant something else and it's just really fun to see the different sections of the field changing um but then some things that stay consistent is they will put flowers in for the spring and summer and it's kind of a self pick they just have a little box that you put the money in and kind of an honor system they also have a self pick berry um they do raspberries and um Cherries, strawberries. strawberries. Anyway, it's amazing. But uh, across the fields, they have a little hut set up and it's, um, we call it the automat, but it's basically vending machines that you can go. And so I get my eggs typically from the vending machine. And, and, and that's get... so cool. I've, I've got video yeah. on that. So that's okay, yeah. good. Yep. For, yes, I figured. And then they have really good ice cream. They have milk. Um, 
I can get potatoes, onions, potatoes, flour, like just mm -hmm. any, any, any of those essentials. Really good local apple, apple juice. Um, anyway, so that's just kind of a fun, I feel like that's a huge quality of life for me, just that it's so easy to just go down there and pick up something fresh. Yeah, that's and it's important that, that, because that would... on Sundays everything is closed. So if you really are in a bind and you forgot to get stuff, you can kind of <laughs> you can manage the same way. <laughs> yeah, but yep. we don't have this little vending machines like they have. We're, we're which, fortunate yeah. we have a fruit and vegetable market that stays open. <laughs> oh, good, good. Great. Yes. Yeah. So um that little fruit and vegetable market, uh, I think they even have like ice cream and I mean it's almost yeah. like a little convenience store, but it's just vending machines and um your just typical needs mm -hmm. right yeah. right uh, yeah that was something unique I, to see so many vending machines for like you want potatoes you have potatoes you want ice cream homemade you know local made ice cream it's there uh, now you've got lots of walking areas around there and um i know it was dog friendly when we were out there mm -hmm. so it's it's a really pet friendly community um and you know, I, I, I go back to my days when I was stationed in Germany many, many years ago. And, you know, I I felt so at ease as far as the uh, the safety there. And I know mm -hmm. that if I was if I if I was walking the streets of downtown Zweibrücken from way back when and it was two in the morning that there would be no risk of anything happening to me. And is it still that way? And would you trust Benjamin walking around at night? We do. We do. Yeah. We do. Um, I'm trying to think like we have a good example is in the fall, we have the the kraut fest, the, the cabbage festival. Mm -hmm. um, and it's a big deal in our area. So in Echter, Echterdingen is the name of the city and they have a wonderful kind of like um, the Oktoberfest. But this but this is centered around like the harvest and cabbage, which sauerkraut. is sauerkraut. <laughs> and so they they closed down the streets and so um this past fall benjamin was able to hang out with his buddies and they were taking the train coming back late you know like around midnight and there was no no concern um it's 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 just different over here i think we calculated that uh, i looked at the the homicide statistics and germany is about 112 of the homicide rate is of North Carolina, where we moved from. I feel like he has freedom. He has a lot more freedom than in the States. And I, I read a statistic that about 40 or 50% of Germans uh, walk or bike to work regularly, mm -hmm. at least in our area. And I think because of that, drivers, the same people who are driving are also cyclists and people who mm -hmm. take public transportation and walk. And so everybody knows to look out for the kids look out for bikes here you know people yield you know to the pedestrians they yield the cyclists um and you never feel like you're going to get run off the road so we have a, a volkswagen tiguan and it's a diesel and with a manual transmission so it's it's very fuel efficient um on the highway we get a little bit over 40 miles per gallon um if you're not speeding too much on the autobahn which reduces your miles per gallon into the 30s but it can be a very efficient if you're going at normal speed. So I would say we probably average around 40 miles per gallon, um, converting that over from liters per hundred kilometers over mm -hmm. to FPG. And then the cost, um, our tank is about 13 gallons and we fill up on the local economy. It would cost about a hundred euro or about $110 to fill up. A tank of gas can last the entire month mm -hmm. because the commute, uh, for me, it's only for me, it's only uh, six kilometers into work and back. So I'm looking at a round trip of 12 K. So we, we on our with the efficiency of our vehicle, we probably get somewhere you can get about 800 kilometers to a tank, maybe a little bit more if you're on the highway yeah. going efficiently. So, so we're so, only shy of 500 miles to your tank, about 480 ish. So our vehicle's a 2021. Um, and so we're we're paying for full coverage and so we're paying a hundred dollars a month and yeah, that's a lot less than what you what a lot of people would see for a vehicle in the u.s especially mm -hmm. in 2021 the downtown uh, stuttgart well we, we we almost always take the train mm -hmm. because it, it's so much easier and you don't have to worry about parking mm -hmm. and and so um and the, and the train costs are very very reasonable uh here in germany um for the past several months they've been offering a uh a nationwide uh, rail pass for 49 euro a month mm -hmm. 
But if you just need like a one-way ticket, it's normally about three euro for a one-way ticket. Somebody really doesn't need a car unless that's something they want to have. Right, right. And we actually have one of my coworkers and his wife are, are living here and they're living in downtown Stuttgart. He takes the train into work every day, train and then bus. And so he has his regular route down. And so um, you don't need you don't need a vehicle. First off, we loved your your home that you're renting Thank there. Um, can you talk to us about rents in the area and utilities? For government civilians and for contractors, uh, we benefit from a housing benefit called LQA, Living Quarters Allowance. And this is a publicly available uh, uh, on the State Department website that establishes the rates. And so we get reimbursed for our housing cost up to a certain amount. And so our apartment, um, we are spending um, a total of about 2950 US dollars a month. And that includes uh, 2570 euro for the rent. And then we also pay electricity of about 140 euro a month. And then convert that over with the exchange rate, which varies and works out between 2900 and 3000 a month for us. And that's well within that LQA amount that we're authorized. It doesn't reimburse you. Like if you go significantly under the rate, you don't get to keep or pocket the change on that. And so uh, for us, we wanted to have a house that was big enough to be able to have guests over, like when we had y'all last spring. Thank you. Or, uh, <laughs> Or we've had family that, that has come over and we have family coming over the summer. And so um, so we got a four bedroom, two and a half bath uh, apartment that obviously is, is larger than what we need for the three of us. But we knew it would allow us to be able to have friends and family come visit, which is something that was important to us when, when we got it. Yeah. So as far as the rates go, um, we've looked on some of the German uh, on the German websites. I looked today. At an apartment that was a, um, I looked at one that was a three bedroom, one and a half bath, and another was a two bedroom, one bath, and both of those were under fifteen hundred dollars a month uh, for the rent, and they were in good areas. They're actually closer to Stuttgart than where we are, so not in a rural area, close to everything. So if you wanted to go with something smaller but was still very livable, like a two bedroom, one bath, with you know like. You could get something like that for um, around 1,500 euro, maybe a little bit less. Sorry, $1,500. Okay. Uh, the, the prices we looked at today, I saw one for 1,350 euro a month. Mm -hmm. And that's the warm rent. And I'll talk about that in a minute. And then another for 1,340 euro a month. So in Germany, they, they um, and that leads to the warm rent versus cold rent. In Germany, when you look at listings, uh, they'll say cold rent or they'll say warm rent and cold rent is just the cost without utilities and then warm rent is the cost if utilities are included and so that's something very important when looking at real estate uh, to rent in germany is to see is that a warm rent cost which has all utilities included or is that a cold rent cost if somebody wanted to get by on 1500 for rent and, and that's, this is going to be a, a, a decent place, $1,500, $1,350. Euros. Uh, what would your living costs total out to be for the three of you on top of that? So, so I'll go with low end. I think on the low end, if you got, and that was a warm rent cost, $1,500 a month for €1,350. Euro. If you went without, and that's in a great area, um, it's only about three miles from uh, the downtown area of Stuttgart, so it's closer in than we are. Let's say you didn't do a car, and it was just a couple, like living in a two-bedroom place, so they still have a spare bedroom for friends or family. I think you could do under 3000 a month, for, and that would be a comfortable lifestyle. We're assuming that you have some type of health insurance, but we can get into that in a minute. Health insurance costs are very cheap here. Dental costs are very cheap. Um we we pay cash up front and then we submit for reimbursement. So we get to see what the real expenses are. So we're not using base medical, like we're using on the local economy medical. And um even things like physicals, medications are fairly are fairly inexpensive. So I think that for a couple, if you're paying fifteen hundred for the rent, groceries of another six fifty, seven hundred. You have health insurance and everything else. I think you could easily do under three thousand dollars a month, even living here in Stuttgart, which is a great area with lots of businesses. Regarding medical insurance, let me just jump in here real quickly. 
So I'm an I'm an appointed agent um, with several companies back in the states that deal with um, international medical insurance. Julie and I, for example, we have a $2,500 deductible on us, a million dollars worth of coverage. We're paying roughly shy of $250 a month for us to have coverage. Um, if you want to run quotes for yourself, uh, you can go to our website, warrenjulietravel.com, and go to the International Medical tab, and you can run quotes. I've got three different companies in there that you can check out, or you can email me directly at warrenjulietravel at gmail.com, and I'll send you some information and uh, see if I can help point you in the right directions. You know, it sounds like really Germany is a lot more affordable than a lot of people might think. So you're given roughly a $3,000 comfort zone budget for a couple and mm -hmm. a couple on social security roughly make uh, $2,900 a month. So it doesn't take much more than the average social security for a couple to survive there. Um, do you have any idea if like somebody was a single person looking for a studio or a one bedroom, um, what uh, a, a low end cost might be? I did see one that was in the 800 euro range. Mm -hmm. And again, these were ones in Stuttgart proper, not, not even in the surrounding areas further out. Definitely get in at 800 euro. You could probably get in for a few hundred below that. Um, and I think that's important is even for a retired couple on social security, uh, if they don't, if they're not in Stuttgart proper, they could be in a really wonderful city like Tübingen mm -hmm. or Reutland or some of the other surrounding ones where costs are even lower for housing and I think could be very comfortable. Um, so when you get away from the major cities, Germany is is not that is not as expensive as it is where we're at locally. So costs for eating out go down significantly. Um, so we've visited some wonderful like little towns when we've gone to visit castles in uh, southern Bavaria or Baden-Württemberg. And um, and we notice that the costs do come down a lot, and that rent costs come down a lot. So if you can if you can make it for that the average social security budget here in Stuttgart, I think that they could do very well for themselves in one of the other like really nice um, kind of uh, smaller cities in Germany where costs are a bit lower. Okay, and and just in case uh, people are unaware, Germany's part of the Schengen zone. Schengen. Uh, if you do not have residency in a one of the 29 countries that comprise the Schengen, you can only spend 90 days every 180 days within the zone. Mm -hmm. So if you don't have a reason to be in Germany, you can only be there for 90 days and you have to leave the zone. And most of Europe or what you think of is in that zone. So Montenegro, Albania, Macedonia, uh, the UK, Serbia, Ireland, um, Turkey. Turkey, Moldova are not in that zone. So you can, if you wanted to flip between uh, Germany and another location and you know if you can you know feasibly work out a workable way if you wanted to live in Germany for three months as an American and then go somewhere else for three months and go back and forth. As a reminder, Julie and I we're traveling the world with our two dogs. We're trying to see what it's like to live in different countries, different places. We're trying to share our experiences and expenses with you as well as the experiences and expenses with other expats and nomads that we encounter along our journey. So uh, we thank you, Eric and Jamie, for joining us today. And until next time, have a great day, everybody. Bye-bye. Wonderful seeing you. Ciao. Ciao.